Thank you, uh, Professor Asuj, for giving me opportunity to present our experience with a new device we are using in a open surgery or endoscopic surgery. So I will now try to do the, the sharing. Just a second. Um, so the the topic of our uh, presentation is advanced neuroendoscopy using uh, instrument for automated and continuous aspiration of tumors and intracerebral hematomas. Um, I am uh, sponsored this lecture by Vornia Med. I have no other disclosures and uh, I had interest for uh, multifunctional instruments, and this comes from our experience in open microsurgery, where the main visualization tool is microscope, or now popularly more and more also exoscope, which gives us 4K resolution of picture and more ergonomic positioning than working with microscope. So our basic instruments is a uh, uh, vacuum aspirator. We are using this, which can be controlled analog by a K-hole. Uh, and we use the bipolar pinset, the forceps, which we are using not just for fine hemostasis, but also for manipulation with the tissue. So these are our main instruments for uh, manipulation and removing the tissue. Um, however, uh, some surgeries can be done in more uh, fine way in uh, so-called um, minimally invasive microsurgery. And this can be done in a single trajectory using uh, instrument which is uh, having a working channel and irrigation and aspiration channels. So with the uh, use of uh, uh, endoscope and the working channel, we can do a fine biopsy for the deep seated lesions or if they are deep in the brain parenchyma or they are intraventricular, but removal with uh, endoscope is difficult because you have to grasp and put the specimen out several times and this takes time and in between there is a delicate hemostasis and it's a pretty aesthetic work. Uh, so um, full endoscopy needs some uh, advanced uh, equipment that it could be used also for tumor removal in the deepest parts of the brain which can, can be accessed uh, in one line. So the, there are many technical solutions for full endoscopy, how to introduce microsurgery, which means by manual manipulation with the tissue. And we introduce this with using working channel and the flexible instrument, which is put into the irrigation uh, channel. So we can work at the tip through the through holes and do some manipulation with tissue, like uh, holding with uh, tissue with a grasp pincet and cutting with the endoscopic scissors. Uh, but this can do some uh, cutting or some tearing tissue or taking biopsy. And there are many solutions like we see in these two slides of LOTA and MINOP. Uh, endoscopes. So um, when using navigation, which is a targeting tool, we can use endoscope uh, also for the access between the uh, fascicles, which we can imagine uh, with uh, digital subtraction tractography. So using uh, navigated endoscope, it takes us to the plant trajectory directly to the lesion and with minimal harm or no harm. Uh, beside full endoscopy, there is also a tubular microsurgery. It means working through a 
small corridor, it measures about uh, one three or 1.5 uh, centimeter diameter, and we put inside uh, endoscope for visualization and the special instruments, which are of bionic shape, and we can do the coagulation, scissoring, uh, grasping, and with the good imaging, and we can plan to work between the fascicles and to approach uh, to the lesion deep in the brain with the best uh, non-harmful path. Uh, today, uh, navigation is not just a targeting tool. It also enables us so-called augmented 3D uh, rea reality. This virtual reality uh, made all the structures coming more apparent. They are segmented, and this is a uh, help to our work around the tumor. So here we are using uh, navigation using augmented uh, virtual reality for removal of uh, tuberculum cell meningioma. Mm. We can see that these structures are now much, much more apparent and uh, clear than with the ordinary navigation. So there was a, a need for an instrument uh, who would replace many turns and returns by uh, removing uh, bipolar tissue clamp, uh, by removing through the working channel by using piecemeal technique. So this instrument should somehow do continuous aspiration without stopping, without clogging. So here is the our settlement of instruments prepared for endoscopic, full endoscopic removal using uh, this dedicated instrument, which I will show its functioning in video later on. Uh, the dimensions of uh, ports are very small, working channel is here less than three millimeters, and also the distance is more than 25, 26 centimeters in Lota. So, but in this uh, deep, location, this distant location, we can do a continuous uh, tumor removal by using this dedicated instrument. Here is how we do this, how we do the uh, PVC port, which we insert with the navigated endoscope or the navigation probe into the brain. And when it is inserted in the brain, we enlarge the port, the roll, by using the Fogarty catheter, and we get a dimension of about one centimeter to one centimeter and three millimeters. So through this uh, improvised port, we can work by manual by holding two instruments, and one is the uh, Fujita aspirator, and the second one is a, a removing instrument. Of course, we can use in the right hand a more complex instrument like a uh, Nico Myrat uh, instrument, which has uh, two uh, size, two sets of sizes. One is for endoscopy, and the other one is for open or tubular microsurgery. So the special design of this is this lateral uh, inflow port, which is doing suction. But there is also a cutting uh, knife, which goes with high frequency, and it cuts small pieces of tissue. So there is no stopping and no clogging uh, during removal. So we can use this dedicated instrument in open surgery, full endoscopic or tubular surgery. And our work is doing uh, smoothly, continuous, with no clogging. and because of this lateral positioning, we can have a di directional control of removing uh, the tissue. So it's quite different, like if the hole would be uh, at the tip. Um, and there are also no heat, like it's at the heat is produced in ultrasonic aspirators, but in, and also tissue is destroyed. But here is no heat because this is mechanical removal. 
and uh, this device has also possibility to collect all the tissue that is sucked in. So here is the settlement. Here we are using another plastic tube and we are using now two instruments uh, having aspirator in the left hand for uh, cleaning the field and also do some manipulation and nicomyrat for removal. And in the upper at the 12 o'clock, there is an endoscope, which is uh, uh, giving a slide and the picture to the screen. So this is the instrument. It has a uh, um, possibility to increase the power of suction and also uh, it can be used uh, quite as a tool also for manipulation of the tissue as this will be seen in the next three cases of our early uh, experience in full endoscopic surgery, endoport surgery, and also in open microsurgery. So the first case which was done uh, this summer in late August was this lady with a small tumor uh, growing out of the lateral wall of the uh, lateral right ventricle. So we can see here the close uh, relation of the base of the tumor to the uh, caudal vein. Uh, and also its location in the anterior part. Uh, so we were using a navigated uh, endoscope to enter the ventricles. And when we enter the ventricle, this is the first view of the tumor, which is uh, pale. Uh, it is covered with ependema and there is also some bigger veins and vessels. So we were start removing this and here you can see how the tissue is quite under control. It is sucked and cut away in several small pieces uh, very fast. So this goes in fact in comparison if we would use um, aspiration, the usual one, or if we would use uh, uh, a clamp, a grasp uh, clamp, so it would take hours, but with this instrument we can do pretty fast. The only care we must take is to avoid uh, bigger vessels which must be coagulated previous and uh, uh, resected sharply. So this tumor is now slowly vanishing, you can see that uh, we can turn the inflow so we can protect everything what is posterior or in front of the tip. So we have some directional control of tissue removing. So we are now approaching to the base of the tumor and we are also approaching the um, confluence of the deep cerebral vein and septal vein and caudal vein at the enter of the foramen munro on the same side. So you see the small bites of the instruments, but of course we must avoid uh, vessels. This can be done by reducing the power of suction to make a even more fine control. And here we see at the end that we preserved all major veins. There is some small piece which will be removed and also part of hematoma, which was going down by gravity. It was partially removed as deep as possible. So this is the uh, scan one day after the surgery and we see normal size of ventricle and a small patch of blood here in posterior deepest part of the lateral ventricle. So after three months, uh, it is in the beginning of this November, the condition is improved even further and the patient is doing very well. She has no hydrocephalus and she is 
at home. So the second case we were using uh, Nicomyrat. It was a tubular removal of the tumor here from the ventricle, but this was a primary tumor uh, which was growing from the corpus callosum and splenium down into the posterior part of the ventricle, more exactly into the atrium of uh, left uh, lateral ventricle. So here we can see that this part was full of tumor and that it was growing through the posterior corpus callosum to virus singuli. And the second lesion, which was operated classically, was on the other side, and it was uh, operated in the same session. So it was our plan to enter from the inferotemporo-occipital part with the endoscope to insert the tube and working through the tube. So this could be done also with full endoscopy without the, using the tube, but we felt because of the size of the tumor more confident to use uh, uh, by manual uh, manipulation of the tumor and it was shown that it was the right decision because this tumor, in fact, it was a little bit bloody. So it was good that we had two instruments inside. Uh, we planned this uh, with using the DTI uh, analysis and navigation. And after insertion of the tube, we start removing the tumor uh, using automated and continuous uh, aspiration of this tumor. So this is our settlement and uh, this is how it was during the surgery. So this is the first site of the tumor in the left antrum. So on this left side is going down to temporal uh, Horn. Oh, there's some bigger vein, and on this side is uh, toward the medial side, and anterior is toward the ventricle body. So here we start removing the tumor. You see that it was more bloody than we expected, so it was good to have an aspirator in the left hand. And we are doing this surgery through the plastic tube you see here. And we were doing uh, slowly continuous removal of the tumor. So we could use uh, the tip of the Nicomyrat for manipulation. So we could move press tissue without any harm. And what is also good, in fact, both instruments, they are sucking blood. So our uh, surgical field is much better controlled and more clear for manipulation. It goes pretty fast. So uh, we were quite satisfied with the working speed. It was about 60% power. And in fact, with this technique, we are not working in uh, water media, but in air media. So today, uh, because this is November case uh, from one week ago, uh, we got a sad information that this uh, 15 years old child has a high grade glioma on both sides also this tumor and the other one on the right posteroparietal it's a high, highly malignant glioma so we are continuing doing this and suddenly the ventricle start to open I just need to take find this moment it goes pretty fast. So after inferior basal part, uh, you are moving more anterior and to the roof. And now soon we are 
on the lateral side, we were able to find the entrance to the lateral ventricle. So it, there is some uh, part of the plexus. And now the ventricle will start, the ventricular cavity will now open toward the body and the frontal horn. So this can be done in a very good way under control, as you can see. It's like a uh, uh, loaning the grass yeah. with a loan machine. So here you can see that the tumor now changed the color. So we came from a different part, the part which was not uh, enhancing with contrast, but this part which was exophytic in the ventricle, there was some uh, ring enhancement. So here you can see how we could remove layer by layer on the base of the tumor. But here, of course, in this direction, we are coming up to the corpus callosum and the tumor also goes much farther to the gyrus cinguli, which of course we can't follow. So these are the last parts of the tumor from the roof. And now everything is more or less becoming to end because this is the extent we plant and also what the tube allows us uh, to remove. Now we did a look into the ventricle, we see the plexus here, the choroidal plexal vein. So we go posteriorly. We're still doing some removal here on the medial superior part toward uh, corpus callosum, toward the roof of the tumor. Now we were looking on the lateral side. We see entrance to the temporal horn. We see the plexus coming from lateral uh, ventricle to the temporal horn. And at the end, we have also the last look through the tube to see that our surgical field is calm, no bleeding, perfect hemostasis practically no blood left behind. This child was doing very well and he was released uh, today to pediatrics ward. So here you can see before and after removal. It is done uh, two days ago, the control MRI. And the last case is the use of the Nicomyrat in the open surgery. This was a small residual one, one and a half centimeters uh, glioblastoma, uh, which residuant was our uh, seven years. So here it was also somewhat deep seated position and we wanted to enter this with a small corridor and we were pretty safe that this is behind the Broca area. Um, so this is our settlement. We were doing navigating the Nicomyrat to be as a pointer. And we were removing this with two instruments like before. So this is a very, very nice video which shows how Nicomyrat tip and is safe to work around the insular arteries without any afraid to be grasped in. So I think this is one of the big advantages if we compare to the ultrasound, which is dangerous to small vessel anyway. And so here we can lift tissue, we can do a classical aspiration or cutting and aspiration together like now, and we can quite good remove. So here the removal was supranormal, so it's a, area that is a bit larger 
than before and the patient was doing perfect. It is uh, correct that we mentioned also the alternative and this is the ultrasonic aspirator from Suring. But uh, if I compare this, this instrument has uh, no directional control. It is classical aspirations from the tip and also it produces heat and also the tissue which is um, aspirated. Uh, it is not collected for uh, pathological analysis. So for I see the advantages of this mainly that it aspirates blood, it aspirates clot, it is very useful in evacuation of intraventricular hematomas, which is now uh, coming as a doctrine for faster uh, recovery from stroke. And it also removes tumor, which can be quite hard. So because uh, there is a cutting function, there is no clogging, no stopping, there is directional control with this lateral opening, no heat, and we can also use uh, tissue collection from the very beginning. So I see the other applications of this fine instrument, and one is in the hollowing of the acoustic schwannoma, smaller or bigger, then uh, removing meningioma in tuberculum cellae. So this is from the time I didn't have uh, this instrument, so I was doing this removal in pieces. It is also useful for removal of colloid cyst. And also uh, in some other deep locations like here, when we were removing uh, pineal tumor protruding also into the posterior fourth ventricle, and we were doing endoscopic supraseveral infratentorial approach, but here, uh, instrument like uh, Nicomyrat would be very useful for automatic and continuous removal. Also, endoscopy with such instruments, it produces also possibility to find new minimally invasive approaches because we cannot only do uh, seeing the spot, we also can do biopsy, but we also can do with such instrument quite a good removal and avoid uh, retraction from open surgery. So to conclude, I would say that uh, such instruments are more or less in the future part of the multifunctional instruments that will be uh, used in the near future already. So thank you for your attention.